Hey everyone, so today we're going to set up an application where we're going to get a notification on our phone whenever a remote user presses a button on a key fob. Now, there's a lot of things that you could do with this, and for legal reasons I can't tell you exactly what you can do with it, but if you did happen to have an elderly relative that you wanted to be able to contact you if they were in trouble or needed help, they could absolutely push the button on this key fob remote and it would send a notification to your phone. So you could, like I said, you could use this for a lot of stuff. You know, you could, uh, you could put some weights inside the application and you could give it to, you know, your toddler and he could hit the button on there and it would send you a text message, you know, something like that. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that you could do with this. Um, it's really pretty open-ended. So without further ado, let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the hardware that's used in this application. We have a particle photon module. Uh, we have a key fob interface module that's going to interface to that particle photon module. Uh, it's going to allow the particle photon to be able to see button presses on the key fob. We've got an I2C interface board for the photon module that gives you an I2C uh, connection. And through that I2C connection, we're going to connect a buzzer. This buzzer is mainly going to let the person on the key fob end know what's going on. Um, so whenever they hit that key fob button, we want to let them know that the notification went through. And whenever you receive the alarm, you want to be able to send confirmation back to them to let them know that you received the alarm. So we're going to use the buzzer for that. And of course, we're going to need a key fob button remote. This is a single button remote. Um, the button on this remote actually mounts as button 5 in the firmware and that's because of the different configurations uh, that this key fob uh, button board uh, supports. You know, you can have a center button and then four buttons around it like on a five channel board so that's why the center one is button 5. Uh, we'll get into that more in the firmware. And then we've got an antenna for the key fob and we've got the I2C cable. So let's go ahead and put everything together here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our particle photon module and we'll plug it into the I2C interface shield. Then we'll take our key fob interface module and this actually mounts over the top of the particle module in the outer line of uh, headers here. And then we'll take our I2C interface cable and we'll snap that in here. And then we'll plug that cable into the, uh, the buzzer board to the end connection and then we'll take our antenna and we will screw that on it's going to significantly increase our range and uh, that's pretty much it now we just need to connect our USB cable that we're basically going to use to power the entire setup alright and that's all that we need to do there. You can watch the LED through the through the notch out hole on the fob. Uh, once you have a breathing cyan LED, you're ready to go. If you still uh, need to set up your particle photon module um, and need help with that, you can head over to docs.particle.io and they have everything you need there to get your module set up with your Wi-Fi network and uh, and ready to go. So. If you need to do that, do that at this time. So once your module is plugged in, you've got everything connected and you're uh, all set up, we need to head over to build.particle.io. So here at build.particle.io, we're actually going to flash the firmware into this module. We don't need to do any programming at all for this application because I've provided the full source uh, for all the firmware you need to flash in. So to get that, we need to click on this Libraries tab here on the left to load up the libraries and then here under community libraries we're going to search for fob and that's really all you need to type in it's going to come up the fob underscore alarm we'll click on that and for this uh, library you want to make sure this key fob key dash fob dash buzzer dash article dot ino tab is selected and then click the use this example button Okay, and that forked it into our local library. Um, now we're going to want to click on this uh, icon here for devices. 
Um, if you have more than one device uh, on your account, you want to make sure that you have the device you want to flash this into selected with a star here on the left. I only have one on this account, um, so it's selected by default. And by this uh, glowing cyan indicator next to it, I can tell that it's online. So at this point, all we need to do is flash the firmware. And after flashing, you'll see the LED on your photon module flash a magenta color. And then it will flash green again as it reassociates with the Wi Fi network. And finally, it will uh, go back to breathing cyan, indicating that it is connected back to the cloud. So once that's done, you've got the firmware running in the controller. And that's all that you need to do there. So at this point, um, let's just test to make sure that it's working. And to do that, we'll head over to dashboard.particle.io. And here we'll click on logs. And now we can uh, press this button on our remote to see the uh, event that's published by the device. And you'll hear that there's actually a beep there. This firmware uh, submits a, an event to the particle server. And that function to submit that event to the server actually returns a boolean to let you know that the event was actually submitted to the server successfully. Um, upon that event being submitted to the server successfully, we sound the buzzer one time, letting the user know the alarm was sent successfully. So uh, that's, uh, that's working. We're getting the event here on our log. So now we need to actually monitor that event and do something with it. So to do that, we're going to use IFTTT uh, because we'll use that to actually uh, trigger a notification on our phone letting us know that there was an alarm. Now another thing that this firmware does, and we can go back and take a look at it real quick, and we'll click here on our code, make sure that uh, select the app here. Another thing that this, uh, this application does is it actually publishes a function to the particle cloud called confirm alarm. And uh, basically what that function does is it just sounds the buzzer twice. What we're going to do is whenever we receive an alarm on our, on our uh, smartphone, we're going to get a notification letting us know, hey, there's an alarm situation. The person on the other end that sent that alarm is going to get a notification that the alarm was actually sent to us. Uh, and we indicate that to them with a single bleep of the buzzer. Now to let them know that we actually received and acknowledged the alarm from our smartphone, we're going to call this function and that's going to pu pulse the buzzer twice, letting that person know, okay, hey, I got the alarm, I'm on my way or whatever. So uh, that's pretty much all this firmware does. This is really simple. All this stuff here is just monitoring the key fob remote. You're more than welcome to take a look and see what all is going on. But basically the device publishes an event and receives a function. That's about all that it does. So we'll head over to IFTTT and we're going to set up a recipe here uh, to trigger a notification on our phone whenever this event occurs. So to do that you're going to want to make sure you have two channels hooked up to IFTTT. You're going to want to make sure that the uh, particle channel is connected and the notification channel is connected. Um, to check to see if you already have those connected to your account or to set them up you click, click on channels and then under search for channels we'll type in particle or just start typing it and that'll bring up the particle channel mine indicates that it's already connected if yours is not um, go ahead and click on it and then click connect and it's a very simple step-by-step -step process it's going to ask for your particle uh, account credentials you'll enter that and you're done and then we also ha need to have the notification channel which is actually going to trigger a notification on our phone so if you just start typing in notification, you'll see the if notification channel. Um, and mine is already uh, indicated as connected. So once you have those two channels set up, we need to create a recipe. So we'll click on my recipes here at the top and we'll click on create a recipe. And then we'll click on the this. Um, and under this, we need to uh, search for the particle channel. Okay, so we'll uh, start typing that and then select particle. 
And then we're going to select new event published because the module is going to publish an event that we need to monitor. The event name is going to be, let's just check here, it's going to be event alarm and the data is going to be alarm. So we'll take this and we'll copy it back to IFTTT and we'll put in event alarm and then the contents is going to be alarm. And then we just need to select the ID of the device. We'll click this and I only have one device on this uh, particle account. It's called FOB alarm module. So I'll select that and then I'll click create trigger. Then we're going to set up we want what we want to happen whenever that happens. So we'll click on that and we'll type in notification. We want to click on if notifications. We'll send a notification. And then we can type in whatever we want here. Uh, we can say grandma alarm or whatever you want to name it. This is basically what you're going to get on your smartphone as a notification whenever this happens. So we'll click on create action. So if we get an event with this data, then send a notification to my phone that says grandma alarm. And then we'll click create recipe. All right, so we can now receive notifications letting us know um, that grandma needs help. Okay, so that's all done there. Now we need to let grandma know that we're on our way. So we're going to click on uh, my recipes again. And then we're going to click on do. And we're going to, uh, here it's going to tell you to download um, either the iOS app on your iPhone or the Android app on your Android phone. So you'll need to download and install that app on your phone. You also need to install the uh, IFTTT app. That's going to allow you to get notifications on your phone. So there's two apps. There's the IFTTT app and there's the IFTTT Do app. You need to install those two and then you can receive notifications on your phone. So let's head over to our phone now and let's make sure that that's all set up and ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to install the IFTTT app and the Do app. So to do that, you'll just go to the App Store, and then you'll search for IFTTT. And the first one we get is the If by IFTTT app. And then um, after that, you should see the Do button app by IFTTT. These are the, uh, the two apps that you need to download and install. I've already installed them, so uh, go ahead and do that now. <coughs> then after that, you'll have those apps on your phone. The IF app, basically we have to install that um, in order to get notifications from IFTTT. Um, you don't really need to do anything in this app on your phone since we already created the uh, recipe on IFTTT.com. Um, so there's really nothing to do in that app. We just have to have it installed so we can get notifications. So let's open up the Do Button app and create that recipe so that we can let the person who hit the key fob button know that we're on our way. So we'll click the Do Button app to open it up and then we'll click this little button in the bottom right corner that says Add a Recipe. Okay, and then we'll click the plus. And we're going to go over to Channels and then we'll select the particle channel and then we'll click on create a new recipe and then we're going to click on call a function and then uh, we can enter a title for this we'll say uh, acknowledge alarm okay. and then we can select a uh, function name to call so we'll click that That'll bring up a spinner. And we're going to select Confirm Alarm on FOB Alarm Module. Um, FOB Alarm Module is the name of my module, so that may be different for you, but it should be Confirm Alarm. And then for the input, we can just leave whatever they put there because we're not really accepting any arguments in that function, so we'll click the Add button. And now we have the Acknowledge Alarm button. Um, and we can test this now. If we click this, we should hear two beeps. 
and that lets the person know that we got the alarm. Okay, so let's uh, let's give it a try. Okay, so now that you've got the applications installed on your phone, you have the Do app set up, you've got the IFTTT notification uh, running on your phone, we're ready to test it. So let's go ahead and hit the button. And you'll see we get a pulse of the buzzer. You'll also get a notification on your phone. Once you get that notification on your phone, you can click on the Do button app and let her know that you're on, her, on your way. And then a couple seconds later, she's gonna hear two beeps on her end, letting her know that you got the alarm. So that's about all there is to this application. This is a very simple setup. Um, basically, it's a step-by-step -step process. If you have any other questions, just let us know. You can take a look at all the products you need for this application at controlleverything.com. We have the key fob interface module here, and then we have the one-button key fob remote, we have the particle photon module, the I2C shield for particle photon, and finally the buzzer. That's all the hardware that you need to do this, and this is the entire process for setting it up. Thank you.